carrying the message. They used together and got clean together. But this addict got active in the program and his brother did not. The Saudi Arabian member found in the loss of his brother a powerful drive to carry the message. Carrying the message. <clears throat> Using in Saudi Arabia means shame for the addict and for the family. If anyone tells a family member a family that their son or father is using, the denial is often greater than that of the addict himself. My family had to kneel with not one, but two. One son, but two. Eventually, they could no longer be in denial about either of us. I found help in Narcotics Anonymous, but my brother did not. My family was always unstable, and eventually, my parents divorced. When my father and mother were in the middle of the divorce, I found the time, the reason, and everything I needed to use. I started leaving school at midday to drink and smoke with my friends. I started with prescription drugs and sometimes alcohol. As the years passed, it became hash. I didn't be complete high school. In Saudi Arabia, you can buy drugs in the streets, but only in special areas. It is a Muslim country, and alcohol is not allowed, but alcohol is made illegally in certain houses. Sometimes you can find whiskey or other things that come from outside in expensive places. In these places, I found a sense of pride. I formed a circle of mates who would meet just to use drugs together. It went quickly <clears throat> very quickly went out of control, as the need to belong to the group became the most important thing. We were all too weak to resist these peer pressures. At first, my brother used heroin, and I used hashish, and I was upset because he was using heroin. I went to visit friends after Ramadan, a very important holiday in our religion. We used to smoke hashish together. But this time, I found they were using heroin. All I said was, Oh, you have something new here? As my addiction progressed, I found myself in the same marketplaces as my brother, where they sell heroin. The dealer said, We finally see you here. I tried to control my addiction by using small quantities for short periods. Then it totally consumed my mind. All I could think about was how to take it today and how to find it tomorrow's dose. I started neglecting my work and my family. I spent all my money in order to take my dose, which now became my bread. Using became my only way to practice my daily life. Even though I started losing myself in my health, I was asked by my family to leave my house. I went to stay at my father's house and found a new place to take drugs. My family demanded that I give up drugs, and I promised I would, but to no avail. My sickness was stronger. My family encircled me to force me to cut my friends off. I told them I would, and then would lie and find excuses to take off and see them. In order to acquire drugs, I started stealing from my siblings' wallets and cheating my colleagues. I hurt my loved ones, but was unable to stop. My life deteriorated. I felt abandoned and rejected, and this only made me hurt more and take more. Eventually, I went to the hospital, mostly because of pressure from my family and my work. I was absent from work often, and they sent me to the hospital to find out what was wrong with me. That's when I first found out I could not stop using because my body was sick. Everyone had told me about the pain in the joints and nausea. I realized what they meant once the drugs weren't available. I went back to using as soon as I got out. Everyone gave up on me, and I gave up on myself. But my prayers to God, even under the influence of drugs, had an effect on me. I was finally hospitalized again, this time by choice. When I felt that the drugs stopped working in the hospital, I was forced to attend meetings brought in by an NA's committee for hospitals and associations. 
the equivalent of hospitals and institutions elsewhere. I used to take drugs with one of the speakers. I rushed to him after the lecture to find out how I managed to stay clean all that time. His answer was through the NA program. He told me that after I got out of the hospital, he would take me to NA meetings. When it was time to leave the hospital, he took me to my family, then to a meeting. I was astonished by the welcome that I got for the meetings, after I had been rejected by everyone else. I was amazed by the similarities of the sickness and suffering, and by the varied lengths of clean time of the members. During the meeting, I was asking myself if I could really be like them. The answer was yes. I had become like them, and I belonged to them four months. After the fourth month, I had an appointment with a doctor to follow up on my condition. I consulted my sponsor beforehand, and he told me to explain that my health had settled. The doctor asked me if I suffered from insomnia. My sickness surfaced, and I complained about staying up for a long time before I could fall asleep. He prescribed medication. In only a few hours, I started replacing that medicine with other drugs. In a few months, I fell back to the same bottom, or worse, than I was in before. I asked my sponsor for help, and he asked me to accompany him to the hospital. I agreed, and I finally re- and then I finally rejoined the fellowship. My brother ended up in the same hospital, and we began to stay clean together. I worked hard on myself, and my brother worked two jobs. Most of the time, most of his time was spent with work. He didn't work in NA. I went to NA every day and was involved in service. I asked the man who had carried the message to me in the hospital to be my sponsor. My sponsor took me to work from the hospital every day during that time. My brother did not have such a person in his life. My sponsor had three years more than I did at the time. I stayed close to him from the moment I met him in the hospital. My brother stayed close to no one and became consumed with his life. My brother didn't stay clean. I tried to help him. I tried to speak with him. But I couldn't open the I couldn't find an open mind. I knew that when he promised to stay clean for me, it wouldn't work. Our wives are sisters, and when they came to visit, I saw that he was using. I sent some friends to talk to him because I thought I might not be the best one to help him. I would feel nervous talking with him. And maybe, if it wasn't family, he would be more relaxed. The last time he went to the hospital, when he went to Umrah, our small pilgrimage, he looked good. I never saw him alive again. I was with my family, with everyone, when we found him dead from a relapse. I said, I tried, I tried to help you, but I know the disease was stronger. I felt so sad, I couldn't help him. This has made me more active in my recovery, and has helped me with the members I sponsor and the members I try to carry the message to. It has been two years since I lost my brother to to the disease of addiction. The message that I carry is that my brother and I use drugs together. He stopped using for seven years with me, but he wasn't coming to meetings regularly because he was consumed with his personal life. He was facing its hard conditions without attending meetings or working the steps. Even when he gave up on himself, the NA fellows never gave up on him. He ended up relapsing, and in his last relapse, he gave on up his last chance at his life. It was his last dose, and he died like others did before him. It is the end of our sickness. We know we can't force the addict to recover. We can only carry the message to every addict still suffering the sickness of addiction. I thank God he showed us the way to, to, to in a fellowship. Today, thank God, with the help of my sponsor, I've been clean for 11 years. I stayed clean through the death of my brother. I've been able to use that pain to help others. I have a job and family that make me proud. 
I no longer need to live in shame. Today I found the connections with my family and friends in the NA program that I was looking for in the drugs. Today, the message that we carry in Saudi Arabia is that our addiction is not something we need to be ashamed of or embarrassed by. The message that we carry is that an addict, any addict, can stop taking drugs, lose the desire to use, to take them, and find a new way to live. Today, there are addicts recovering in Saudi Arabia. Thank you, N.A.